Kitchen. Today we're going to make blackened shrimp avocado cucumber bites. That's a lot to say. These are fantastic. I know it's my favorite word. Sharon's going to give you junk about it, but that's all right. These are wonderful. They're easy to make and they're tasty as the devil. First thing we're going to do is make our Creole seasoning. Now, you can use this Tony's Cacheri's. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I've used this before. This is actually nothing wrong with this. This is very good. And if you don't want to do that, this will save you time. If not, I'm starting off with a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, two and a half teaspoons of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of pepper, and one teaspoon of oregano, dried oregano, and one teaspoon of dried thyme. And we're just gonna mix those together. It's better to do this in the beginning because you'll have this ready to go. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Not too much if it's on the cutting board or elsewhere. All right, so that takes care of that. We got our Creole seasoning done. My sous chef, Sharon, is going to cut the, uh, the onions before we assemble everything. Tell us where remoulade sauce comes from. Well, it comes from France. This is from the 17th century French. And the main thing that it has in it that makes it different from like say tartar sauce because it has mayonnaise and horseradish is it also has capers. Uh, but it's gonna have a few other things also in it. All right, we're ready to do our remoulade sauce. Uh, first of all, the main ingredients that we have actually are uh, mustard, which is not here, which is mayonnaise, and we got uh, about a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise, and we've got some uh, brown mustard, capers, paprika, and cayenne, about a quarter teaspoon of each, about a teaspoon of horseradish, and about a tablespoon of uh, ketchup. By the way, it's one tablespoon of mustard. Now, remoulade comes from France, and it's first known widely believed use was around the 17th century so 1600s and it was used in re it's kind of similar to what we would use for tartar sauce this is one tablespoon of mustard brown mustard and primarily it was mayonnaise and horseradish which i'm going to put the teaspoon of horseradish in now and of course, to be French, you've got to have some capers. And I've got just a little bit of the sauce. That's one teaspoon of capers with a little bit of the juice from it. A quarter teaspoon of paprika, smoked paprika, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne are in here. Then we've got one chopped green onion, one clove of garlic. All right, so that's enough garlic right there. Then I'm going to put in a couple of dabs. There's a dab of hot sauce. And we're going to mix this all up. And we are just about ready to make our blackened shrimp. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. Try not to get the seeds in there. I'm going to put just a little bit more. That's a little bit less than that. That's probably good right there. All right, now let's mix this up. It'll be a little thinner, but that's all right. Let's try this. That's looking good. Next thing is to do the avocado. And you don't have to worry about going through this and cutting yourself because there's a big old pit in there. If you haven't done these before, then a little twist. That looks pretty good. Then do hold it below. And let's try. See if I get this the first time. Ah! There we go. We really want the, the edges because that's the really green part. Now, if you got some spots in here, like I got a little brown here, let's get that off of there. That doesn't look good. You gotta have salt with avocado, or it really doesn't have very much flavor. So, I, just a good pinch or two. And then we are going to add some minced garlic to it. Okay, I did add a little bit of lemon juice to the uh, 
avocado because for a couple of reasons. One is it has a little more zing to it. And the second thing is it stops it from turning brown. So you do need to do that. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of parsley just to add it, make it a little bit greener. So we got about, oh, I would say a little more than a tablespoon. And I'm just gonna make stripes down this thing so we have a little bit of green because we're gonna cut these into round pieces. And this will give us a little bit of green on it, which will look really super good, I think. And I think that's good right there. I mean, they don't all have to be exactly the same. You want it to be big enough to hold up, to hold everything. So about a quarter of an inch. They need to be little miniature shrimp platters. That's it, that's what they are. All right, good job, we're ready to cook shrimp. All right, we're gonna put about a tablespoon of oil. I'm using uh, grapeseed oil, and then we're going to put the seasoning and mix this up well. You can smell that, that smells so good. All right, get a little bit. We're gonna use all of the seasoning. I just wanted to get it all over the place. Here we go, that's looking right. That's plenty. All right, let's get it well covered. And we'll let this sit on there while we're getting our skillet nice and hot. We're gonna get our pan pretty good and hot. Some people say medium high. I think you need this pretty hot. I mean, most of it, here's the thing. The, what you don't wanna do is overcook the shrimp, but you wanna get them hot enough. So two, three minutes total time maybe four minutes, but not any more than that. All right, we literally have this smoking hot. I, I have a little bit less oil in there than I started with. We want to get each one on the pan. So if you get a, this is probably too many to cook at once. In fact, it is because they're not, they're not laying flat. We want them flat. All right, that's been a little more than a minute. Oh, look at those. They are blackened. Yeah, baby. Look at that. I'm happy with that. So we only cook these about two to three minutes, but as you can see, they're pretty nice. They're nice and blackened. They're not overdone. They're tender, and it's time to put them together. So I'm gonna pick out the best looking cucumbers here. And if you do all those, you might need another avocado, but that's not the big deal. We have plenty of remoulade sauce, but I think it might Take two avocados to do all that you want. Put a shrimp on each one. These things look fantastic. I'm gonna put a little more sauce on these. Less is more. Less is more, she says. Where did the parsley come from? from our garden with this brand new irrigation system <laughs> so we have pretty good fresh herbs it's time to try these and i am looking forward to this i think i'm gonna take it i i don't think you could do this in one bite you know with company or friend maybe family Mmm. Well, it's tangy. You absolutely can taste the shrimp, no question. It tastes fantastic. The roulade sauce is great, I like the capers in it. I still think one tablespoon of lemon juice, though. It's just a little more lemon, even. Ah, there comes the heat. I'm voting for one tablespoon, though, in the, uh, the roulade sauce. I think one's plenty. But let's finish this. Mmm. Messy, 
It is a little messy. Yep. Tasty. Oh, I'm spitting. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> it's our house. <laughs> we can spit. I'm surprised at the cucumber and shrimp. I wasn't sure I would like that combination, mm -hmm. but I really do. That's a neat combination. I think it's tasty. Mm -hmm. I like it. Hey, thanks for coming by, and thanks for watching Lawyer in the Kitchen. I'll see you next time.